In this edition of RIN TV, Dr. Hartwig from the Triple I looks at financial performance, the Affordable Care Act, and a summer of regulation. Guy Carpenter sees a record first quarter for cap bonds. The CEA sees more cap bonds in its future, and highlights from the Biba conference in Manchester. All this and more, you're watching World Risk and Insurance News on RIN TV. Hello, I'm Marisa Christian, and here's what's happening in the world of insurance. With investors transfixed by the Facebook IPO on the Nasdaq exchange last week, insurance companies continue to post solid results for the first quarter. We return now to the Nasdaq studios in New York and my recent discussion with Dr. Robert Hartwig from the Insurance Information Institute with his views on the industry's financial performance and more. It's uh, certainly a welcome relief as we look at the first quarter 2012 results compared to the first quarter 2011. The results are better and in general insurers around the world have exceeded expectations actually even given the widespread knowledge that catastrophe losses were substantially lower this year compared to 2011. Across the globe the main concern among property casualty insurers is the continued uh, low interest rate structure that we see across Western Europe in the US, Japan, uh, the major insuring economies of the world. And, and ultimately this has to be uh, made up for in some other kind of a way. And the way that, uh, that ROEs need to be uh, kept up is going to be through tougher underwriting and generally that means higher prices. The Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, and uh, this is a heated political issue, but even before we get into the meaty part of the election here in the United States, uh, the Supreme Court is going to answer a lot of questions. And the most likely scenario is perhaps that this, the, the, the Supreme Court actually strikes down the individual mandate citing its unconstitutionality. That leaves a couple of options. Is the, the question then, is the rest of the act actually viable without the individual mandate? Uh, there are some states that have said they will continue to go ahead with their own type of health care insurance program. We could wind up with what effectively amounts to a mishmash of different types of approaches to health care reform in the United States, ironically potentially being led by the states. Over the next couple of months, I think that uh, insurers, aside from the traditional sorts of concerns about catastrophe losses, are going to be looking for volatility in the financial markets, which is kind of a contagion type effect uh, coming over from Europe. I think that the, the summer is going to be the, the summer of, of regulation. There are lots of clouds gathering on the horizon that need to be cleared away uh, by the White House, by the SEC, by the Congress, by the Supreme Court, and then hopefully we'll have a little bit of clarity by the end of the summer. But then the markets will begin to focus on the uncertainty associated with future tax rates. Uh, and we're looking at what would be a very large tax hike in the United States uh, under current law unless Congress acts. If you'd like to see my entire interview with Dr. Hartwig, visit our on-demand library. According to Guy Carpenter, the global cap bond market hit a new record in the first quarter. A report released by GC Securities says the $1.34 billion of risk capital issued in the first quarter of 2012 exceeded the previous record $1.02 billion issued in the first quarter last year. In other cap bond news, the California Earthquake Authority approved the issuance of $300 million in additional cap bonds this year. Its governing board wants to take advantage of current market terms and pricing. Sources say the CEA has 10% of their reinsurance in the cap on market. Another $300 million issuance could take that up to 20% of their total cover. We leave you with highlights from the recent Biba conference in Manchester. And if you missed our two-part interview with Biba chief executive Eric Galbraith, visit our on-demand library. Always available, always free. On our next program, we will be joined by Kevin O'Brien, president of the IMUA, for a discussion on the inland marine market. I'm Marisa Christian. You're watching World Risk and Insurance News on RIN TV. This is my message for the European Commission, and in particular, Michel Barnier, the European Commissioner. There is a fundamental difference between investment products and insurance products. We believe the case for mandatory disclosure has not been proven. Unfortunately, political interference in the remuneration system by the European Commission could be a byproduct of the overzealous application of investment type rules into the insurance sector. Biba has begun a process of engagement with insurers to develop a market agreement on unconditional risk transfer. 
And today, I'm calling upon insurers and the ABI to work with us on this fundamentally important issue.